Thursday afternoon chat. Your favorite artists with Jay Off. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you're driving, will you do me a favor and put your hands together for our dear friend, Jordan <laughs> Feliz. How are you? <laughs> Dude, I'm doing good. I love that. Just, just in case you're driving, don't do that. We want to stick with the Please. laws of the land. I yeah, think yeah. that's biblical. I Obey think it is. the laws. Yeah, of the land. I, no, I know. Give it to is Caesar. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Depends on what state you're in. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, it is great to see you. I know we've got yeah. you coming to town soon. Yes, I'm so excited. We're coming there on my f- my f- second headlining tour. Um, it's uh, it's the biggest tour I've ever done. So I'm really really excited. It's called the Faith Tour. And I'm pumped, man. It's going to be awesome. Who are you bringing this time around? Um, we'll be there with um, North Point Inside Out. I Am They will be there on some select dates. And uh, uh, or North Point Inside Out will be there on some select dates. I Am They will be there and uh, Hannah Kerr. Okay. Yeah. Very so nice. Yeah. We have all ticket info at thejoyfm.com. Uh, we've grown to the point I can't just toss out one town and say, come see Jordan and blah, blah, blah. Praise the Lord. It's good. Hey, yeah. It's good. Growth is good. But uh, <laughs> now thank the Lord for the website that people can go. Yeah, I want to see how like close Jordan's coming to me. Hey, you know. We don't have any new. Mu- I know you're working on new music right now. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's in I the infancy stage. Yes. In the infancy stage, uh, starting to work on that. Um, it'll be out next year. But I'm really, really excited about it. I'm pumped. We did just put out um, uh, my new single, Faith. So uh, I'm really, really pumped up about that one. It's a really special song for me. So Can you walk me up uh, DNA of, of Faith? Yes, yeah. So um, for me, Faith was kind of a song that I felt like was a gift. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you ever feel like you – you pray for something and then God just kind of gives you the thing that you're like, yes, that's exactly what I needed. And maybe it didn't feel like it hit you right away, but it, it hit you though <laughs> at some point. Um, and that's what that song was for me, man. Honestly, it, it just, uh, it is literally something that is a reminder for all of us that we, we find true freedom when we give things back to God, the things that he gives us, I think, we like to trick ourselves and our human nature to think that they're ours. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, and the weight of that can be crippling. Um, for And I feel like it's one of the reasons why our society has such a huge issue with anxiety. And I've gone through anxiety and stress and um, panic attacks and all these things. And I think it's because I felt this human just this human part of who I am is just craving control in my life. It's craving all these things. But, um, that's why I say, man, like the moment that we just trust God with what we have, like we find true freedom as believers, um, is all it takes is just a little bit of faith in him. The night from the road that you'll never forget. <laughs> you can take <laughs> your time. Back, oh my gosh. The night from the road that I'll never forget. Um, <coughs> Probably my... Fr- oh, sorry. And if there's not a massive story, we can skip it. There's a massive... I mean, it's a okay. really long story. I mean, I'll try to summarize okay. it. Uh, <laughs> so my first tour ever was with Big Daddy Weave. And um, so after the show, I go and I'm changing into like, you know, comfy clothes, going to go back on the bus. My first tour bus tour I've ever been on, you right. know, this is the second week. And somebody knocked on my door and they said, hey, there's a fan out here. And she didn't make it to the signing line. And she would really love for you to sign her poster. And I was like, oh, of course, you know. And so This sounds like the beginning of a, like a horror movie, like something. It it's kind raining. Of, it kind <laughs> of is the beginning of a horror movie. Do you end um, up in the back of somebody's trunk? I just need to know that right now because I'm nervous. No, but I mean, it might as well be. Okay. No. <laughs> um. But seriously, so I walk out there, and it's this, I mean, she's maybe in her, like, late 30s, mid 40s, somewhere in there. She had, like, this, like, uh, like shawl that was, like, over her head. Like, she literally looked like a depiction of somebody, like, like, I don't know, just, it just, I have no idea. She was the most, like, a gypsy slash, like, 
like what you maybe like what the depiction of Mary looks like, you okay. know, like oh, okay, just yeah. like this. It was just so strange, though, because it was she just was just wrapped in all these like clothes and stuff. And I was like, OK, this is kind of weird. <laughs> um, And guys, it's my first tour. I have no idea what's happening. So I'm we, we right start now. talking. <laughs> yeah, we start talking. Everything's kind of just like her story is very sad. And um, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, I'm feeling bad because it's, you know, she's in an abusive marriage, you know, and so I get sucked in. I'm just feeling awful. And like, I'm like telling her, I'm like, man, just I'll be praying for you. And and she goes, yeah, she's like, um, if you wouldn't mind praying for my three kids as well. And I was like, of course. And she was like, I'm sorry, I have four kids. And I was like, oh, OK. Um, and so she starts naming off her children and then she's changing the name of her kids as she's naming them and she's changing their ages. So she'll, she'll like example, she'll be like, uh, my first one, his name is Derek and he's three. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sorry. It's not Derek. It's Claire and she's four. And you're like, (laughs) what, (laughs) what? Like, what are you talking? What? Can I and just so, get you a shirt? Yeah, uh, like, yeah, can we, what's yeah. going on? So, at this moment, I have three volunteers, and the pastor of the church we just played is standing right next to me. And so, at this point, I'm like seeing red flags, you know? So, I'm like, I'm like, just keep looking over at them, like, yeah, like, what's our safe word? What's it? Yeah, <laughs> what is the word that gets me out of this? Um, so, guys, I mean, this goes on for literally 20 minutes and I have no idea how to get out of the conversation because I'm a massive people pleaser. So I'm like freaking out inside. Like, how do I leave but not make her mad? Um, And she starts, I mean, she goes deep into how she has been. This is the one that got me where I'm like wondering why people aren't stepping in because she was saying that uh, God came to her and told her that she would be the first bride of Jesus in heaven. And I literally was like, oh, boy, oh, my (laughs) goodness, what is happening right now? So literally, guys, I'm sitting there. I'm stressing out. We start taking a picture and she reaches in her bag and she grabs this ginormous like pen. At first, I thought it was a (laughs) knife. Like, I'm not kidding you. I thought it was a knife. I was like, I'm going to die. I just Uh. became a dad, and now I'm going to die. Stop filming, everybody. Yes. I don't want this to end up. (laughs) So she's literally, she's holding this pen, but it's like the biggest pen you've ever seen. I mean, it's like a foot long, and it's like metal. Like, and I'm like, she's going to stab me with this thing for sure. Or something. So she's like, so then we we sit, like, get ready to, to, like, take this picture, and I've got my arm like this around her just kind of smiling but also like (laughs) looking because not only is she holding the pen but she's holding it like this like like perfect position perfect position to basically like jab somebody did you ever see so i married an axe murderer with mike myers no if you watch that it is this okay yes so i'm like literally staring at the pen and like, I can't look away because I'm like, I'm not yeah. looking away because if she does like try to like hurt me, I don't want to like, I don't want to just be smiling. <laughs> like, so I'm like trying to like, you know, navigate both of this, these yeah. things. And, uh, and I literally look over and the pastor of the church goes, Hey, you got to look at the camera. No. And I remember, I remember looking at him and just thinking in my head, like, dude, are you serious? Like yeah. you, are you seeing or hearing any of this? So we take the picture. She's been saying all kinds of weird stuff. You know, it's it's less like, you know, yeah. loopy. And all of a sudden I hear the back door to where we are standing like open. And like I, I look over and it's one of the tour managers. And I just looked at him with like terrified yeah. eyes. I'm like, OK, pull the red and cord. He literally grabs me, lifts me up, throws me over his shoulder. And he's like telling me that we have to go. And as that happens, she grabs my arm oh. and she literally gets down on like her knees and she's like thanking me as if like I'm Jesus or something. I mean, it was so weird, dude, like weird. Like it felt scary, yeah. weird, you know? So then like we're walking out to the bus and like I'll never forget <laughs> Rick was like literally slapping the back of my leg. Like I felt like I was being punished like a yeah. child. And he's like, what was that about? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I was just like, 
<laughs> I thought she wanted a picture and she wanted me to sign her poster. Yeah. And he got back up on the bus and he basically just scolded me and was like, dude, anywhere you go, somebody has to be there with right. you, you know, blah, blah. So all this happens, right? Yeah. I get on the bus. The big daddy weaves are guys are literally cracking up. They think this is hilarious. Oh, and I'm like, dude, this is, this was scary. And they're like, no, this is hilarious. Are you serious? So then right before we're about to leave, Jeremy Redman, the guitar player for big daddy weave looks at me and he goes, wouldn't it just be hilarious if she was like somewhere waiting for us or something? Oh, and no. I'm like, this gets worse. No, no, that's <laughs> not funny. That's not good. No, no, that's awful. And at the time, the bus driver, there was a whole thing with the bus driver. He had seen her. Yeah. They, they, she left her phone in the buildings, and he took it out because he saw me get on the bus. And it was this whole other story, yeah. you know. Like, just go, I mean, we're talking, you know, two hours of stuff right now. Oof. So then we get on the bus, and all of a sudden, I hear – the driver literally yell at all of us and he goes, guys, she's right there. She's right there. And we're getting on the interstate and she's literally parked waiting for the bus. And so we pass by her and she literally just starts inching next to the bus. So she drove with us for like, I think probably like 10 miles, but every like 30 seconds we would feel the bus go off the road and we would be hearing Roper yelling in the front. <laughs> and like, it was the lady was trying to like literally like pin the bus like off the road. Like she's literally, so he gets on the phone with the police and like literally he gets, he's like calling everybody trying to get somebody to help us. Finally, I'm, I'm mortified. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> the I'm longest like, 10 minutes of my your life. First tour. Like what is going on? And uh, all of a sudden, all of us were like, all the lights are off in the bus because we're like freaked <laughs> out. And like, we're looking out the window and we just see her and she takes off into this field, like right off the interstate. Like, mm -hmm. imagine somebody just driving off the interstate into a field. So you just see her, bra her brake lights are like, <laughs> woo, woo, you know, like, be, like going insane. And we had to have, we had four uh, police cars escort us out of the county yeah because of this crazy lady that came to take a picture with me and i it was my first tour and i remember i literally <laughs> for like the rest of the tour i was like i'm so sorry oh, yeah. i didn't i have no idea who these people are that has to be stuck in your hippo like in your back here forever oh dude literally one of the i mean it's kind of hilarious now yeah. but like it's still kind of like such a trippy like yeah experience of like who was it i still don't know her name yeah. it's just like but her face is like ingrained oh in yeah my brain. i now know how we're gonna take our photo for the facebook and the instagram later i'm so excited i'm gonna be yeah. holding something, something in my hand yes <laughs> i was so waiting for you to say and that's how big daddy weave hazed me it was a planted <laughs> woman they got the whole thing rigged. Oh my gosh! Can you imagine <laughs> if, like, five years later, they're like, "Hey, remember that lady? That's my sister." That was actually, yeah, <laughs> that was my sister. All right, Jordan Feliz is my guest. He is coming to town very soon. We have ticket info at the JoyFM.com album coming next year. Five-year-old Jordan Feliz, who were you emulating with a pretend microphone in a fake concert in your living room? Oh gosh, five-year-old me. You know, kid. You don't need to go exactly to five. Probably. Um, it was probably some kind of a song. It was probably September by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. That probably would have been it. Because that, like, my parents, like, just, those were, like, the records that Do they just listened to. Yeah. Yeah. The 21st night of yeah. September. Yeah. Did I you have long hair then? No. Okay. No. I mean, I kind of, yeah, actually. I mean, long for what? Maybe everybody else thinks it's yeah. long. I, I literally have had long hair forever. Right. Um. But, yeah, it was like ear length, I guess. I don't know if that's gotcha. long. If yeah. That would be short for me. So. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna. This is going to be a fine dance between, huh, silly Jordan 5 singing into a quick deep one, okay? Okay. Do you have things in your past that are off limits in regards to, uh, obviously you don't tell us, but are there things that you just won't write about? Like faith is obviously what you do, but uh, you know, family is an easy one to go to. Um, but are there things that you just like, ah, 
or is anything open? You know, it's you an know, open book to write. That's a great one, dude. Um, I think for a while I thought that there were a couple things for me that were like off limits. Um, but record three has like kind of like opened up this new like. I it sounds so weird, but it's almost like a new dimension to my heart that I feel like the Lord has been like kind of like healing i guess and and through that i feel like there's a lot of honesty and a lot of uh just commentary almost behind it for me so i feel like that's where a lot of my my new record is kind of coming from is from this like new area in who i am that i feel like i was like okay i can feel free to like talk about things that and and I mean there are probably things that other people talk about all the time but for me for some reason it just wasn't really something that I really thought about writing music about you know and um and it, it all just goes right back to who God is in our lives and who uh who he was created or who we were created to be you know um and uh I, I think like that's the thing is like I just I just want to be honest and I want to be genuine and authentic. That's been my heart since day one, since I started creating music. And it just feels like that's where we are right now is we're in that phase is just honesty, you know. Um, and yeah, dude. So I think it was off limits, I guess, to answer your question. But lately it feels like all of a sudden there's this new area that feels like okay maybe it's not anymore which is kind of exciting so yeah um let's go with i I know you're in uh you're at the front end of your career i guess when you look at the long landscape you're even though album three comes that's still considered front end maybe yeah maybe (coughs) unless you're wrapping it up (laughs) soon no Uh, but how much have you thought about the way you'll be remembered in in regards to career when you're old. I know everybody, it's easy to say yeah. for your wife and for your kids, legacy totally. for them is an easy question. But musically, when we do this art and ministry thing, mm-hmm. you're still an artist that makes yeah. something. How yep. much have you put thought into, hey, how much will people remember me one day? <sighs> yeah. You know, like, honestly, dude, I... M- I feel like I exist to elevate the name of somebody else and not to elevate the name of myself. So as long as people remember Jesus, like, I think that that's like my end goal. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I'll throw in, that's a great perspective because I know it sounds like, uh, this is no offense to you, but it sounds like a Christian radio answer, but it's, it's, it's the best answer. I mean, that is a great answer. I think for me, it's like, it, it's, it's just, it's not even like a, answer that I feel like I I always tell people you know like obviously I want you to come to the shows I want you to remember me I want you to remember like what you felt at the concert because I I go to see artists all the time and like I love seeing music and I love seeing music get created I love seeing it played live I love seeing I love being a part of all of that um but that's kind of the difference between our industry and everybody else like in my mind yeah. like it's not just like i hear all the time oh it's the lyric you know it's not the music it's the lyric well it's not just the lyric either it should be who we are to e- to each other to everybody around us to the people at our shows like i'd say it every night when my team doesn't show up to put on this ridiculous live show or you know even though we want to put on a ridiculous live show we want to do all those things we want it to sound amazing we want you to have fun smile we want you to heal you we want all those things for you but that all happens not because of me it happens because jesus is here with us Mm. and he is capable of anything you'll probably relate Um, with this then because my for 15 years almost 20 years starting in seattle as in a skyscraper for a kiss fm type station yeah it's like wow god opened the door for me to be here now let me go be the best entertainer i could be so for a decade and a half that's been my focus is ratings just killing it on the air because that's my job yeah and all of a sudden about five years ago i just had this almost like god leads you to a stage and it looks like 
the carrot has dangled you to uh, just a cool job. Yeah. But I don't think he does that on accident because I think he saw hearts back there and went, all right, it's going to look like he's this rock star for a little while. And then all of a sudden I'm going to go, boom, you're here for a specific time and purpose. Yes. Which he doesn't yeah. make mistakes like that. Yeah, dude. Yep. And I, I think like, you know, that's that's the the biggest thing for me, man, is like really just I want, you know, if they do think of a Jordan Fleece concert, I want them to be like, man, like we really like that was a that was a kingdom building night. That was a Jesus elevating night, you know. So, right. yeah, we're going to wrap up Jordan with a little feature called Tickle in the Ivories. We <laughs> brought a uh, piano into the studio here <laughs> and um, the concept is with a lot of the guests throughout the fall and the winter and the spring. Some are brilliant piano players. Others have never played a piano in their life. And so Amazing. this is the unknown. Um, this is Jordan Feliz, <laughs> Tickle in the Ivories. Uh, we're going to walk over to the piano and uh, turn a microphone on over there. And you will have on my clock 30 seconds to just do something. All right. All right. Yeah. All are right. you a piano player? Actually, I wonder if I even want to know this. <laughs> I wonder if. I wonder if we just leave leave it unknown right now. All right. Okay, let's head over. This is uh, Tickle in the Ivories with Jordan Feliz. He's in front of the piano. I'm just going to rest on the piano like I'm some 1950s lounge. Do I need to, like, look at you no, while we do No, ignore this? me. <laughs> ignore me. I'm just taking in your 30 seconds of Tickling the Ivories. Okay. 30 seconds. The clock is on. place <laughs> so you play a little i don't know uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go tickling the ivories with here we Jordan are Feliz. well done well hey done. thanks <laughs> the thursday afternoon chat your favorite artists with jay off